Hello friends, I'm Fide Instructor Atul Dahale and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm really really happy because today is a big day for each and every Indian chess player. Not only a chess player, but for every Indian, this day is a big day because Indian team won against Poland in the semi-finals of online chess Olympiad. This is a big big news guys. What happened in this match? In our first mini match, we lost against Poland and that was not something which was expected. But our Indian team did not lose their heart. Our captain cool Vidit Gujarati also played amazing game. Even Vishyanan, our world chess champion, he also played a great game and he won. And after the all the matches, we were tied with the Poland with 1-1 one, one score. But the next step, the next thing was very, very difficult because we have to play Armageddon and everything will be decided who is going into the finals on that one Armageddon game. And the responsibility to play in that match was given upon Koneru Hampi, the Grandmaster from uh, India. She is the Iron Lady, truly uh, an um, unbelievable chess player because I will tell you one thing, few years back she had a uh, like baby, she took break from the chess. but. Two years back, she came back in chess, she played in the World Rapid Tournament and she won that tournament. She is the World Rapid Chess Champion and after that she even played in the Grand Prix. She won that thing also and she has already won so many laurels for India. So she had shown great character in this match only because uh, we are going to see it and she, co she showed that she is the one who can take the tension, she can take the pressure also and he, she can perform in, at the best of her cap capabilities. So without further delay, let's get started with the game and find out what really happened in this game, how she won this game, how she handled all the nervous tension which was there. Because I was commenting with uh, Grandmaster Sham Sundar and we were so much uh, nervous before the game. So you can understand the feeling of playing this game is also a very, very big tension. So in this game, her opponent was Monika Soko who recently, means yesterday only she won her uh, Armageddon game against uh, her opponent. So she was a little bit uh, prepared, you can say. She started with d4 in this position. Then uh, Humpy played knight f6, c4, e6, g3, d5 was played, bishop g2, d takes c4, where there are several options in this position. But she decided to play d takes c4. And here, white usually plays knight f3. Then uh, the play might go on with a6, castle, knight c6 and then usually e3 bishop d7 queen e2 and the play goes on the pawn on c4 will not be protected by black and white needs to invest some time to capture that pawn in that meantime black develops uh, his pieces and uh, the game goes on but in this position humpy's opponent decided to play knight d2 this is a completely new move in this position because what white is trying to do is like uh, she is trying to get the bogo indian kind of a position where Bishop b4 might be played and then she can play knight f3 and castle. But Humpy saw the opportunity. She saw that the pawn on d4 is hanging and she took the pawn with queen d4. Now already black is pawn up in this position. And slowly and gradually she played in amazing style and converted this pawn advantage. We are going to see that thing very quickly now. G, uh, knight was played to f3 square. Queen went back to d8 square. This is a safe square for it. Castling. And now... Okay, the pawn on c4 is going to be captured by the knight on d2. So Humpy made a very nice practical decision in this position. She decided to play c3, just giving up the pawn and ruining white's pawn structure. After this, she calmly played bishop e7, queen c2 was played and she castled. She has completed her development on the king side and now white decided to play e4. Well, what she is doing in this position is like she is trying to get some counterplay in the center of the board. But Humpy showed that, okay, in this position, I would like to tell one more thing that Humpy was thinking a little bit more. But after knight c6, she started getting the grasp of the position more, I think, and she started playing a little bit faster. Knight c4 was played. Then she quickly played knight d7. After knight, knight d7 is a very important move because this e5 square needs to be protected by the uh, pieces here in this case. And now here, white played rook d1. It was necessary to play queen e8 and after queen e8 white played yet another good move bishop f4 well what humpy's opponent is trying to do is like putting pressure on c7 and in this position okay black can play something passive like bishop d8 this is also viable option in the position but this is really very passive and humpy did not go for passive defense she decided to play in active chess because in armageddon game i would just like to tell 
that white will be getting 5 minutes and black will be getting 4 minutes in this case white must win if black even draws the game that is also enough for black to win the match and that is what black wants black just want simple position where black can draw the game so here humpy decided to play e5 and liquidate the position the tension in the center of the board after knight f e5 knight d e5 knight takes e5 knight takes e5 bishop takes e5 she played c6 now blocking the bishop's diagonal in this case you can say and rook a b1 okay the pawn on b7 is being attacked so she played b6 and after b6 bishop f4 was played Bishop e6, yet another good developing move and now the next idea will be to exchange the rooks in this position and black will be fine in that case. So her opponent played bishop e3 with the idea of playing f4, f5, okay, this was the her opponent's idea and Humpy was very quick to understand this thing and she played queen c8. After queen c8, after f4, she quickly played bishop h3. Exchanging one pair of bishop is a very good idea in this kind of positions because you can see black's bishops were not that active but White's bishops were putting a lot of pressure on these two diagonals and it is a very wise decision to exchange one pair of bishop in this case. So white played f5, opening up the bishop on e3 and Humpy played bishop takes g2, king takes g2 and she even played f6. A very interesting idea I will say. Usually f6 is not that great move but I felt when I was commenting that f6 might be useful because see Humpy's plan is very clear. She wants to control the e5 square. Whenever white is going to play e5, she is going to capture here and the bishop will be kept on f6 square. Where it will be putting pressure on this diagonal and that is good enough for black. So her opponent Monika Soko played bishop f4. Humpy played bishop c5 putting the bishop on a good diagonal. And one more thing is there behind this. The idea is there. If white any point at any point plays a4, then black will be playing a5. And after a4, a5, the pawn on b6 will be firmly supported in this case. Now... Monica decided to play rook d2 with the idea of playing rook, doubling the rooks in this thing. So Humpy played rook d8 trying to exchange the pair of rook in this position and that really happened. Rook b d1 then rook takes d2, queen takes d2 and now it's time to exchange eight another rook in this position. That's why she played queen e8. As you can see Humpy is playing very simple chess. She is exchanging one piece after another because all she needs in this game is a draw. Okay, She doesn't need anything more so queen e2 is played. Now rook d8, one one more and have opponent played queen c4 check, king f8, it's not needed to go in the corner of the board, king f8 is good enough for you to play in the center of the board. Now rook takes d8, queen takes d8 and now h4. Well, all this drama is over I will say and in this position it looks like uh, black is going to hold on to the position and they uh, equal the time also. So after queen d7, a4 was played, then a5, queen a6, okay, white is trying to get into the main position or something, Humpy played calmly king f7, no checks, nothing yet, queen a8 and now h6, okay, another square for the king, whenever it is necessary, king can hide on the h7 square, queen a6 was played and here we were rooting that, we were saying like, come on, play queen d1, go for the checkmate or something like that because queen g1 and all those threats are coming, her opponent lost her control here, she played queen c4 check, king f8 and e5. Well, in this position, we were already jumping and we're very excited that the game is going to be win because f e5 is a big, big mistake and Humpy played in time pressure. He was having only one minute in this position, but she completed the thing with queen c2 check, king g, king f3, queen takes f5 and black eight on other got one pawn. And I'll just quickly go through the game because after this, uh, this uh, black is pawn up in this position, uh, Humpy is trying to exchange the queens and after this... Uh, h5 pawn is also gone and now this is almost all over she got the piece also on e1 and then okay out of inertia white kept on playing but in the end white was uh, checkmated after few moves uh, here she queened pawn also the pawn was queening and uh, one after another she queened the pawn here with two queens on the board well uh, she just checkmated her opponent and brought the victory for team india it was a great victory for team india and Next game will be the finals and it will be interesting how our Indian team will be playing in the finals. So guys, thank you for watching this video. Kudos to our uh, great team. India OP should be there in the chat and India Humpy OP also. Thank you for watching the video. Goodbye. Take care.